Okay, so our next speaker will be Oscar de Lima, who will talk about uh, type 2 superconductivity in arrays of nanostructured gallium. Okay, hello ev everybody. So I'd like to thank the organizers of this uh, workshop, as well as uh, thank the directors of this International Institute of Physics for hosting this uh, nice meeting. And uh, then I'm going to tell you about a type 2 superconductivity observed in arrays of nanostructured beta gallium. This is part of a PhD work done by Caroline Moura. And uh, this project is partially supported by the Brazilian agencies, FAPESP and CNPQ. Uh, let's see. For some reason, it's not going ahead. OK. Uh, sorry, I have to put this here. Sorry. Now, it works. So after a brief introduction, I will talk about the, our sample preparation, the experimental results, uh, some calculated properties, and also a model uh, we propose for a crossover field, and finally, our conclusions. OK, then uh, superconductivity in gallium was discovered in 1929 with ATC around 1K. And uh, uh, this is uh, the common uh, uh, alpha gallium with a melting temperature around 30 degrees Celsius. Uh, by now, it's uh, 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 several polymorphic phases of gallium are already known. And most of those phases present type 1 superconductivity. One of these phases is uh, the beta gallium, uh, which was uh, discovered to be superconductor here in this work in 1966 with ATC around 6.2K. And uh, this beta gallium has metastable monoclinic structure and melts around minus 16 degrees Celsius. So it's necessary to have some uh, uh, geometrical constraint in order to stabilize the beta gallium phase. Uh, a detailed work was published in 1973, done in the same mm, gallium spheres, uh, uh, demonstrating uh, that this was a type 1 superconductor. Okay, in our samples, we got the nanostructured gallium prepared by the so called the metal flux nanonucleation method that was developed in our laboratory at Unicamp. And uh, uh, in brief words, uh, we start with uh, a template, an alumina template that is fabricated starting from aluminum anodization, where we got uh, a very well ordered uh, uh, template with uh, um, micro holes or pores uh, with a large aspect ratio. And this is put inside a sealed quartz tube and make, we make uh, heat treatment and in order that the gallium goes inside the holes. And then we get uh, the sample that we measured. Here is a small top view area uh, showing the gallium uh, nanowires. Uh, it's a top view. Uh, and uh, typically, they have uh, ab about 140 nanometers diameter, and uh, distant from each other about 250 nanometers. This is just a lateral view of one uh, a part of a piece of this long nanowire. Uh, to begin with, we did uh, uh, the uh, this uh, magnetization measurements. Uh, and uh, indeed, the critical temperature confirmed that uh, we got the expected for beta gallium around 6.2K. And uh, all measurements that I will show here today were done with the field applied perpendicular to the nanowires. Okay. Uh, in this diagram, uh, uh, it shows that uh, the geometrical confinement required for getting the beta uh, uh, gallium phase requires that the sample size has to be below 250 nanometers. In our case, we are more or less in this region here. 
And uh, one uh, perhaps most important evidence that we got really beta gallium is this uh, specific heat measurement that shows a, uh, a peak in the specific uh, in due to the latent heat uh, precisely at the expected melting point for beta gallium. And then now I show you some magnetization curves. And I recall that uh, all these measurements is with the field perpendicular to the wires. And uh, this is for 2K. And uh, this uh, is, uh, looks like a typical magnetization curve for type 2 materials that uh, has negligible bulk pinning uh, because this is very small. The, uh, 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 histories in the Meissner region, as well as in the increasing branches. Here there is the, uh, the virgin for, uh, first run, and all subsequent measurements show just a slightly uh, difference, so we have no histories due to bulk uh, pinning. However, in the decreasing field, we have uh, larger histories here. Okay, and uh, starting from the upper critical field, we have this almost horizontal region. Uh, and then uh, at the field that we label ATD, uh, it's a kind of crossover field where then the di diamagnetic signal sets in and we come back. Okay, we uh, defined the equilibrium magnetization curve by the average between the increase and decreasing branch. This will be used later on in the calculations. And the similar results were obtained for other temperatures, like I show here for 4 Kelvin, for 5 Kelvin. And I call your attention that the, this elbow uh, that defines the HD is present in all these measurements. Also, we did the so-called minor history loop measurement. Uh, this used to be in the past some kind of uh, test for type two superconductivity to see that we have uh, this signature. And what uh, we did is uh, we start from zero field and goes up, up to some field here and then goes back to this uh, field above H1 and then back again in this second path till here and then back to zero. And the small history loop is located here. And uh, uh, I will just uh, uh, call your attention for this uh, almost straight uh, part in the uh, entrance and, and the exit of uh, uh, flux uh, lines or, 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 or flux fields. Uh, and uh, uh, this uh, region is almost parallel to the Meissner region is uh, cor related to the uh, surface barriers uh, of, uh, and the typical loop is uh, what uh, one expects for type two superconductors. Well, it's not with me. And then uh, we got some the tip characteristics fields uh, like HC2 from the MT curves and from MH curves and uh, the extrapolated value to zero temperature was uh, calculated using the WH8 formula. Also, uh, the HC, uh, that means the thermodynamical critical field, w w was calculated using this expression, uh, the magnetic work uh, equal to the condensation energy. And uh, this uh, open blue triangles represent the crossover field that we identified in all measurements. And uh, here I show a fit to this uh, crossover field, and this will be used later. Then uh, the, uh, we calculated some properties. And uh, to begin with, I have to talk about the, some, the effective uh, coherence length that was defined as the product of the uh, F psi, we call this depletion, de depletion parameter. And uh, the lambda E, uh, which is the uh, effective uh, penetration depth, it's uh, the product of F lambda times the expected bulk value. This is to, uh, to provide uh, a, 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 or, or, or the situation that we will get uh, uh, suppressed vortices or depleted vortices in the border of our nanowire. 
uh, the coherence length was estimated to at zero temperature to be around 60 nanometers using this expression uh, and uh, extrapolated uh, uh, HC2 at zero temperature. The kappa factor was obtained starting with the Mackey parameter kappa 1 uh, because this is uh, below Tc. But uh, uh, we did this for temperatures coming close to Tc, and as we know, this extrapolation to Tc uh, is a good estimative of uh, uh, the Ginzburg-Landau parameter uh, uh, that we got in, in this case, 1.18. And this uh, uh, is uh, above uh, 0.707. Uh, and then it uh, is a, like a clear, a clear signature of type 2 uh, superconductor. Uh, uh, again, uh, one more property is the penetration depth. Uh, uh, we started uh, estimating the zero temperature thermodynamic field using this Gorkov expression. And uh, uh, putting this in this expression for a lambda, uh, then we got uh, 88 nanometers. So lambda uh, uh, larger than psi, as would be expected for type 2 uh, superconductors. One more parameter is an uh, important parameter from BCS th theory. That is the ratio between the gap energy and thermal energy and that for weak coupling superconductors is around 3.55, 3 uh, 3.53, I guess. And uh, uh, we got 3.61 using this uh, uh, phenomenological expression. I didn't know this before, but look at the literature. It was funny to find this uh, paper uh, that gives this uh, expression. Uh, and uh, I see that other people who have used it, it, it and it, it really works to give an estimative of this energy ratio. This value is uh, similar to indium, uh, uh, other uh, tin, other typical uh, uh, weak coupling m uh, superconductors. Okay, then now I come to what I, I said is, is a simple model for the crossover field. And this model, is based on the fact that we got this uh, 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 co coherence length, you see, uh, around uh, at zero temperature, around six nanometer, lambda 88 nanometer. That means uh, this is comparable with the uh, nanowire uh, diameter. So in this sketch here, uh, it's like uh, uh, seeing the situation around uh, maybe one or two K. That means if we increase temperature, those uh, vortices should come larger than the nanowire diameter. And then uh, uh, we thought that uh, uh, the maximum of vortices would be, uh, that would be allowed, would be in a single row. That, and th from here came our inspiration to write that the nanowire length would be given by n vortices times to lambda, the, the vortice size. And the vortex uh, density would be uh, the number of vortices divided by the cross-sectional, the maximal cross-sectional area, because this is a cylinder, and uh, uh, along with the, the length. Then, uh, using the definition for the magnetic induction, induction that's uh, vortex density times the vortex quantum, and in this uh, high field region, this is uh, the same as the applied field, then uh, we got this expression, which can be written in this form by using this definition for lambda t, and also the already presented uh, relation define the effective or experimental values for uh, coherence length and penetration depth. And uh, uh, now, uh, using the fitted experimental results, uh, putting it equal to here, and then we could extract the uh, so-called depletion parameter for the penetration depth that is plotted here in this uh, graph. Uh, you see, as you increase temperature, it uh, goes down slowly, almost 
uh, so in the, in the exponent of one fourth. Uh, another experimental uh, 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 a property that uh, we uh, uh, studied in, in, in with this model was the reduced uh, uh, the reduced uh, crossover field. That means uh, uh, normalizing it by HC2 values, and this gives this experimental uh, values that were was also fitted by this expression, and then by uh, combining this uh, uh, expression that comes from this definition uh, and this other and this other, the only uh, function that is left to be determined, determined is the f xi, the other depletion parameter that uh, uh, then gives this uh, value and it's plotted here. So uh, it's uh, interesting to think a little bit about this result. Because what it tells us is that the by increasing temperatures and the vortex becomes fat, I mean to the uh, to larger diameters, the suppression at the borders of the wire become uh, heavier, and then this is more or less is uh, is described by the, those uh, uh, de depletion uh, parameters, uh, the effective values. You know, uh, when you get the, uh, this uh, F values get smaller, this means that the effective values becomes smaller compared to what is expected for a bulk uh, property, a bulk value. Okay, from uh, these results, we should expect what I call the funny vortices. And what I'm going to show you here is a cartoon. It's not a simulation done with uh, Gensburg Landau. Uh, <laughs> Uh, calculations, but just thinking on our results uh, and uh, using uh, the volume uh, obtained at the intersection between two cylinders. This one represents the nano wire with the diameter d. The vertical one represents the bulk vortex, and uh, then uh, uh, we should expect some suppression at the edges of these two objects, like this here, in the case when the vortex diameter is about uh, uh, half of the nanowire diameter. And then we see that just in the top and bottom, we have some suppression of the Cooper pair density. And here, around the, the uh, cylindrical surface, we get uh, the uh, uh, constant uh, maximum uh, Cooper pair density. If we go to higher vortices diameters, like increasing temperature, no, we can come to the situation where this is equal to this one, and you get this funny view of a vortex, uh, vortex that uh, uh, has a larger suppression in this region of intersection with the, uh, the superconducting material, no, with the nanowire. And uh, in the more extreme case, when the vortex uh, is larger, the diameter is, uh, in this case, 20% larger than uh, the nanowire. Uh, you see it, uh, it's a, a heavily suppressed or depleted uh, of uh, copper pair density in these regions. Then, uh, uh, as I said, this uh, uh, is uh, an expectation, and it would be nice if some, some uh, a, a, a simulation using 3D uh, Ginsburg Landau equations could in fact verify those kind of uh, vortices. So as a conclusion, the first is that uh, we were able to see type 2 superconductivity in beta gallium nanowires confined in this regular special geometric array. And I enforce this point that uh, this uh, geometrical constraint is essential to stabilize the beta gallium phase. And another point is the uh, field has to be always perpendicular. We have a set of measurements in field parallel that does not show this uh, uh, elbow, and this, uh, the curves almost uh, 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 returns have a, a, a reversibility point, etc. But this is another work. And also uh, the estimated Ginsburg Landau parameter with a value above 0.707. And finally, 
uh, uh, motivated uh, in providing more arguments in favor of a type 2 uh, behavior. And I say in this form because uh, gallium is typically a classical type 1 superconductor in the mind of everybody in superconductivity. In fact, I, 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 I discovered that this was the sixth uh, material discovered at the Leiden laboratory uh, in 1929. So uh, uh, in order to present this alternative interpretation, I, uh, we, uh, ha uh, we thought that uh, we should have uh, more evidences. And then this model, I think, that helped us in the sense that it is based in the occurrence of uh, Abrikozov vortices. And indeed, it uh, gave a very reasonable uh, description of our experimental data. Uh, and uh, this uh, uh, depletion parameters, as uh, we call it, uh, uh, is a novelty for me and for, for our group. And it would be very nice, again, if uh, some Ginzburg-Landau 3D simulation could be maybe uh, obtain something similar to this. And that is uh, my final observation concerning our contribution. Thank you very much. Thank you. We have time for questions.